Um, hello, I'm uh, Laura Miller McPherson. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Physical Therapy, so thank you to BME for having me here today. Uh, my PhD is in biomedical engineering, and I also have a Doctor of Physical Therapy degree. So as a physical therapist, uh, my goal when working with patients is to improve their functional mobility. So sitting, standing, walking, stairs, reaching. Um, this particular patient is Senator Mark Kirk, who had a stroke in 2012. Um, and patients like Senator Kirk often have difficulty with moving one side of their body. Um, so this can result in functional deficits in reaching because of difficulty moving their arm and hand, as well as um, gait and balance disturbances. So biomedical engineers are very important in helping patients like this um, in many different ways. But one of them is through quantification of what the person's deficits are. Um, so we can quantify things like biomechanics, muscle activation, movement with increasingly novel technology. And this helps us really understand what the deficits are that we need to treat. Another thing is that we can also, as engineers, um, directly influence a person's care through the development of rehabilitation robotics or assistive technologies, or permanently augment somebody's function using neuroprostheses. And of course, both of these aspects require um, intimate knowledge of the pathophysiology as well as the clinical re relevance. What's going to actually work in the clinic? What clinic and what's going to help the patients. Um, so what my research um, kind of focuses on the domain of quantification of what motor deficits are after stroke um, in order to better understand the pathophysiology of what's behind the deficits and then using that information as an application is to inform the development of these rehabilitation devices. Now, one of my research paradigms is looking at a possible mechanism of balance disturbances following stroke. So in healthy individuals, there's a very tight coupling between the cardiovascular system, the sensory motor system, and the musculoskeletal system in postural control during standing. Um, so our calf muscles are active when you're standing um, to control your postural sway and respond to perturbations from the environment, but your calf muscles also contract because they have to physically uh, pump the blood back up to your heart and maintain your blood pressure. Um, so all these systems have to be very tightly uh, coupled and work together to um, have stable postural control. Now in stroke, we know that there's disturbances in sensory motor function, musculoskeletal function, as well as cardiovascular um, systems because these people have cardiovascular disease. But what we don't know yet is how, these, um, how the coupling between these systems are altered. So that's something that I'm going to be looking at using um, continuous blood pressure measurements, muscle activation, motor unit firing behavior, as well as postural sway. Another one of my research paradigms is looking at um, activation patterns in the upper limb following stroke. So individuals after stroke often are constrained um, to grouped patterns of movement, so they have to kind of move within these grouped flexion patterns, and they can't control their, their muscles or their joints independently. So it's very difficult to go outside of these patterns and lift your arm up, reach out, and open your hand. Um, so in order to study this, we um, instrument the whole arm, so we look at the joint level behavior, so the biomechanics, um, joint torques and forces that are generated, but then we also look deeper into the nervous system and look at motor unit discharge. Um, so we do this using a pretty novel technique, high density surface EMG, that we can then decompose into motor unit behavior. Um, and so once we have the motor unit data, um, we can look at the time and frequency domain analysis of the signals and try to find out why are these muscles being driven together, why can't they move outside of these grouped movement patterns, and then also um, are the muscles in the upper limb after stroke being driven by a different neural circuit than they are um, in control individuals. So for example, we think that the brainstem is very important um, in generating movement after stroke, but it might be why you get these grouped movement patterns, whereas in controls, of course, the cortex is very um, essential to movement. So um, please uh, track me down. I'm on the main campus in AHC3 if you have questions about my research or how physical therapy and biomedical engineering can be combined. Thank you.